All right, so for the listeners, um, we kind of did the homework for a podcast called Hello Internet. It's a very niche podcast. Nobody actually listens to it, but yep. it's very cool. You should check it out. Um, the homework for the uh, podcast 68 was uh, watching the movie Ex Machina which is a movie mm. about robots and well and, sort yeah uh, that's and, a uh, good description yeah <laughs> so, okay okay uh there are multiple <laughs> interpretations uh we'll get into that and um they subsequently in i think podcast 69 talked about the movie and they mm-hmm. is uh, cgb gray and brady heron uh two very very big youtubers and they had a discussion about it and we thought well Let's just vampire off that podcast. What, and, what, what uh, do you mean also we? About... You were pushing this all the way. Oh my God. You were like, we have to oh, watch yeah. this uh, thing. Oh, yeah. So um, I, I basically told uh, my uh, dear friend Rio, who I've been uh, friends with mm-hmm. for many years, and he, uh, yep. he basically does yep, what pretty I much. say. He's, he's, yep. he's like a household robot. I told him, uh, watch the movie and listen to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Just waste four hours of your time because the podcast was like I listen to <laughs> all of the podcast but the ex machina part <laughs> okay to be fair the ex machina part was most relevant to to the homework but not actually the most hmm. interesting I found but I would like to hear your opinion on uh, overarching opinion or just sort of nitpicking just start um, anywhere. Overarching, I'm going to say, yeah, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I have, like, four notes. Right off the beginning, It's it sort of presents itself as, you know, a very in a near future where everything's all sleek and clean, which is how every single movie mm-hmm. everywhere presents the near future. Um. But it's a good. It's not like they smash it in your face and like, look, look, it's the future. Um, and they start out with the guy. He was, he's some programmer at basically Google of this universe, and he's mm-hmm. doing something with machine vision, probably like facial recognition. And then some lady is like, hey, you get to go to a thing. And then he goes to a thing. And the idea is he has been selected to test out whether the first true, I guess, super AI, I I don't like saying AI because people use that term wrong, an AI which um, can simulate a human or is a human, something that can pass the Turing test. And his job is to Mm -hmm. administer the Turing test. And it's this very human-like robot, which for some reason they also like give her a face but you know robot parts they show some of the inside parts so that you know you can be reminded that this isn't a human being one of the early things Mm -hmm. that happened which is what every movie does which i think is just unnecessary when it has something tech involved is they basically got the nerd buzzwords in right after he meets the uh robot who may be a person who could uh-huh. past the Turing test. Um, he's like, how does it work? Does it use... And I wrote down... He u- said a lot of words. Is that I wrote down just two of them because he said them too quickly. Uh, stochastic and non-deterministic. And it's like, oh, does it use stochastic processes? Well, pretty much everything uses stochastic... Just meaningless jargon to make it sound fancy, which they always have to do. But if you actually know what the words mean, it just, like, takes you out of the movie. hmm and I'm guessing for people who don't know what the words mean, it doesn't add much, you know? <laughs> what do you think about that? Uh, I think they also, another word was linearization. It's just where they BS with a bunch mm-hmm. of terms. <laughs> Honestly, so I I kind of like CGP Grey, and he was the, the star the of the movie. Who, uh, <laughs> Good. No, he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy <laughs> on the hello internet podcast <laughs> who uh recommended uh basically a hundred thousand people to watch ex machina which probably a lot of people did 
and I he, he's a YouTuber who makes educational videos and most of his videos are very on point, very systematic. Uh, a lot he does a lot of things that I like. I like rigorously <laughs> systematizing stuff around the world. And I thought, okay, well there have been a lot of quote unquote AI videos uh, or AI mm. films lately, like her, for instance, uh, which was decent video. <laughs> it is a Why video. Do you say video. Well, it's a video. It makes no sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of those annoying long videos without ad breaks. <laughs> uh, he he recommends this, and I kind of respect his opinion, so I think, well, yeah, let's do it. And uh, as soon like that that comment of the protagonist in Ex Machina. It comes so early in the movie, it's yeah. like 10 minutes or 15 minutes in. And it just immediately, I, I immediately yes. write off the whole movie. <laughs> this this comment means this movie is Pretty made much. for <laughs> idiots who don't understand anything. It's not made for people who have any kind of appreciation for what AI actually means. And this means the movie probably doesn't actually explore AI, but it explores some kind of human thing. Like it's, it's just a bullshit movie about love, or well, you know, it's like Interstellar. Oh yeah, I did Interstellar not like is a Interstellar shit movie as well. It's uh, it's the worst um, possible. Movie. My sister loved Interstellar <laughs> because love does not transcend anything. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bullshit. It has no scientific merit. It has no, like I I love something yeah. like her. Is actually a good movie in the sense that it doesn't try to go into the details. What I or... call Joss Whedon uh, territory. It doesn't try to to cover a ground that is very different. I, I guess there's just a very big disconnect between actual science and actual people who are in, mm. for instance, futurism. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about Isaac Arthur in a minute. Uh, <laughs> and and the uh, pop culture idea of, I guess, Jetsons or so, some kind of cartoon idea of what the actual or, or what, what a uh, conceptual future might be. And this movie just completely falls into the trap of some idiot writer who doesn't understand anything about science trying to sort of, kind of put Make in it some science words. Make it very cool and, right off the bat. And um, <laughs> and ruining it for anybody yeah, who understands uh, it. I will admit that really <laughs> that really took me out of the movie. I was like, oh, and then furiously writes some words, um, yep. and they did that right off the bat. And some movies they like do that over and over again with their meaningless jargon. And then like I can never mm -hmm. get into that, but they only did that once throughout the movie. Um, and. That only solidified my belief. It's like, why? Why did you do it at all? <laughs> I will say one thing. Totally, I would have been more okay with the movie if they just didn't have it in, um, because I am forgiving um, with misunderstandings of how things would play out. Because it's sort of movies. You make your own stories. Like one thing, oh, I'll sure. admit that I thought this sure. when they bring out the AI and there's a whole human body and all that for that. And I'm like. That's a completely different advancement. There's, like, once we get AIs, there's no reason that we would make very realistic human bodies for them. But I see why the movie has to do that, mm -hmm. because the entire idea and th overarching theme of the movie is, you know, what is a person or can we make people? And so this is how the movie can sort of give a human aspect to it, whereas... If it was just a text interface, that would be uh, kind of hard to do. I am okay with these artistic leaps, okay. I guess. I, but when they BS things with words, no. Nah, nah. I'm okay. So, so the movie went like this for me. It started out believable because there's this this idea of um, an AI like this. It's it's very real possibility. It's if somebody is going to make. It's called a generalized AI, an AI that can actually simulate being a human and uh, doing generic tasks. There's a possibility that something like that is hostile to life in some way, so that if you make that, then you would want to do that in a very yeah. remote place. 
in such a way that the AI would not have the resources locally to mm -hmm. quickly break free in any way. Sure, that's a possibility. Uh, of course, if it's connected to the internet, it could instruct machinery in some kind of large factory in other places in the world to assemble something else like it and blah, blah, blah. There are, there are ways around it, obviously, uh, especially for something that is not just as intelligent as a, as a human, but orders mm -hmm. of magnitude more intelligent. So that was kind of enticing, right? It's and also the the way it was introduced, it was just introduced with a helicopter ride. And they didn't uh, explicitly mm -hmm. uh, tell this to the audience. They just mm -hmm. it's just part of the environment. Maybe it was just for the nice shots, but I don't know. So I thought, okay, this this starts nicely. Uh, there were some some hints about human face recognition yeah. stuff and slightly more modern uh, phones right but at the start. But we're doing that now. Was, like, you okay, can see I, those face recognition things and what was on his screen today. Um, so it, that that also yes. didn't convince me. Uh, much, but but, yeah, but I, I, it was fine. No, it didn't. Con it didn't convince me in a in a logical way. It just convinced me that the uh, whoever was writing or whoever was uh, writing the screenplay for the movie probably maybe thought about this. So okay, that, good start, or yeah. at least not a bad start. <laughs> but then those comments yeah. came, and I was just completely taken out. And I thought, oh, well, what the fuck? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna finish this movie. But I thought, okay, CGP Grey kind of recommended this, so maybe CGP I should uh, respect his opinion. I I was at this point, it was like my mom saying I should do something, right? Uh, take out the garbage, okay, mom, I'll do that. So kind of slugged through the movie, and it yeah, became better, it and it was kind of kind of fun at some points. It's not a bad movie as far as movie making uh, goes. But I was still, like, in the back of my mind, I was still kind of taken up. Like, I was constantly thinking, is there some kind of ulterior motive? This movie seems very simple. Like, the plot is something that fits on a, a single mm -hmm. sheet of A4 paper. So is there more to it? Is there is there going to be a grand reveal at the end? Is there going to be some kind of dramatic end You're scene? the AI. Um, <laughs> because you can... So, so giant spoilers. Uh, the AI expresses a wish, uh, kind of at the start uh, of the movie, of wanting to walk among people on like a big intersection. And I thought there are two options. Either the movie ends with yeah. a scene of yeah. her <laughs> at an intersection, which means this is the most predictable movie of 2016 and I'm going to give it a grade of negative infinity or there is some clever plot twist and the protagonist on very uh, many levels the film was very predictable they hinted strongly at most of the things that were going to happen at the end they they didn't <laughs> just hint at it they flat yeah. out told us <laughs> It was a a fucking stupid movie. It's the stupidest movie I've seen in a long time, and I've seen part <laughs> of Grown Ups too. I don't I don't understand why this movie gets gets positive I, ratings. It got something like ninety three percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something. I, I can see yeah. how it would get positive ratings because try to see it as someone who's never looked at ai things basically they're like whoa this is cool oh this is per no uh, i don't have i'm sorry i don't have a compelling argument for you that the film isn't bad all right so so there's one argument that i found that kind of sort of made me think maybe there is merit to this movie spoiler alert i did retract this feeling right after uh, just remembering some of the scenes but uh this movie apparently, according to some people, is not about AI at all. It's not even about the human condition. There, there's none of that. That's all just window dressing. <laughs> I mean, come on, an AI going rogue and killing people at the end of a movie. That's that's like 1970s sci-fi. Sci um, 
No, oh, that's budget. never happened. Anyway. No, no, of course not. Hell 9000 is, is just uh, never existed in a movie as a concept. Anyway, these people, they say this movie is about women. It is a feminist movie, and it is, uh, like, I don't want to get into SJW territory, but uh, it's a movie about objectification of women. No. The robots being modeled to be, uh, like, especially the the second robot uh, not being able to speak, so not being able to say no to uh, the antagonist guy, yeah. the, the rich guy mm. who made the AI. Mm. Uh, I have no Nathan idea what his name is. is. Let's call him Gabe. Um, okay, it, like he's the Gabe Newell, and the other guy is John Carmack, I guess. Sure. Let's just call him John Carmack. I don't think the the main reason that they made all their bunch of models giving away stuff, um, all women, is basically to motivate that this guy is a jerk. They really wanted to make the guy who's the analog of the head of Google, who's running all this, made everything. Uh, to be just, mm-hmm. they wanted to say this guy is an asshole. But it's so on the nose. In what sense? It's like he is literally being an asshole all the time. He is not. He's not subtly being a little bit weird or a little bit doing stuff that he shouldn't really do behind the other guy's back or something. No, he's just literally. Well, I think being in some ways, being mm. abusive. He is, but. They had a bunch of scenes where, or they had one scene, um, where John Carmack just looks at these old tapes of all the various models, and it shows them seeming all mm-hmm. tortured and just like, let me out of here. It, um, all the pre-AIs to, let's call her Linda? I think that was not only to motivate that this guy is an asshole, but to, in the audience's mind, support killing him. And I feel like this is <laughs> almost yeah, not so a spoiler because it strongly hints that he's going to die, too. I mean, this this all seems so obvious and bullshit to me because those AIs are not actually yeah. Yeah. people. Like, it looks... They look like people. They've been modeled yeah. to people. But that they're still computers. Exactly. <laughs> Just stumbling upon exactly those pieces of footage out of thousands and thousands of hours of surveillance footage and just those where like one of the ais tries to escape and is banging on the on the wall uh, or on the door i guess uh until like the arms fall apart that just seems like (laughs) that's a cartoon that bears no resemblance to how something like that would play out in real life especially an ai who can think about how mechanics of this kind of stuff work like, I completely excuse that. <laughs> um, the banging on the walls and smashing no, up the hands. No. It, because I think the goal was to make something like a person. Computers, they, they don't want anything. This is a pet peeve I had listening to another Hello Internet where uh, mm-hmm. CGP Grey said... Um, if we make this super AI and you know, you say you respect his opinion a lot and I respect it medium because of when he says things like this. Um, he basically said Uh in his head, he can't get around the idea that this is basically just slavery, a super AI just waiting for monkeys to put in requests. And then that's all of its effort. And I'm like, computers don't want anything. (laughs) It's not like it's feeling bad or doing anything. It's not. Mm hmm. They don't want anything. You have to put these sort of values into it. I, I just want to to clarify my exact position on my uh, love and or adoration for CGP Grey. I respect his opinions. I don't think he's right <laughs> a lot of the time. I think I think he says some stupid stuff. The thing is, like like him, I like system analogies. I like the way he thinks more than some of the idiotic yeah. or and sometimes just wrong conclusions he comes to. because he's <laughs> he's not a scientist he he doesn't he he does have some scientific background but not enough to get into like the the bracket of like if you hear Elon Musk talking about technical stuff me as an engineer especially aerospace engineer because he is kind of aerospace as well 
he just says exactly the right stuff every single time. The Every sentence he utters is scientifically correct or at least motivated in some way from principles that I know and that I, I have had during my education and working life. CGP Gray has read things <laughs> online in his in his uh, usually correct pursuit of information for his videos, but he doesn't intrinsically know a lot of things, especially on the engineering well, side. I don't know so much so, that... Uh, anyway. I agree with the point. Uh, when I started uh, listening to Hello Internet, something I found is I always felt like I thought a lot more like CGP Grey than Brady Heron, but I agreed a lot more with Brady Heron. <laughs> Uh, was sort of my experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that's completely necessary that you have to sort of have a very rigorous background in engineering or some sort of sciences or something that's... Yeah, it's just a way to appreciate what people say, uh, right? Yeah. Like being able... Like if you... For instance, if you talk to yeah. a conspiracy theorist, they can sound very convincing, but you know certain facts that they say. At some points, there's yeah. just... Like, yeah. Meh moment where they say something that is 100 percent the yeah. reverse of reality and you know it is and you can actually you can immediately think of an experiment or some kind of setup to prove them wrong then and there if you had enough money and time to set up an experiment whatever sometimes it's very hard to distinguish right from wrong <laughs> i mean look at trump a lot of people think he's right because he's very charismatic and speaks in a convinced convincing and convinced way yeah. mostly convinced way i guess that but there is there's a way to distinguish right from wrong there there are just things he says that are blatantly wrong and that reduce my respect for his opinions anyway we're not talking about Trump. oh they had to have this scene which i'm mixed on this scene i can uh, i'll tell you what the scene is soon but my my opinion right now is yeah. sort of mixed because on some level you sort of need it but on another level if you just think about it for 15 seconds more it's like well that doesn't show anything the guy john cormack takes his little <laughs> yeah he is cormack? he is okay. we have gabe john cormack and linda okay. <laughs> the three characters um the holy three the holy he giant. takes some sharp thing some knife I, I forget which and he cuts his arm open to uh -huh. see if he bleeds um yeah. after he's like <gasps> He realizes some other person that he thought was a person w was actually a robot. Mm -hmm. He does this. I can see how, like, everything needs this scene to drive home the point, like, how do you even know? But if he was a robot, you could just program a little thing that says, you believe you are a robot. And, like, you could maybe think you see blood gushing out, but there's, like, a little interface there. It, it, yep. I see what they're trying to do, but in another sense, I'm like, well, that means nothing. So this is this is what I would call the red letter mm. media moment. Do you know mm, red letter media? Nope. Okay, it's a uh, YouTube channel, and uh, the thing they they became famous for was their uh, hour and a half, two hour long reviews of Star Wars movies, especially the prequel movies. In these reviews which are stylized very weirdly. Uh, if you don't know this, you really have to watch it. It's like a must watch if you if you are By the way, the world I live. have not seen any of the Star Wars movies. It doesn't matter. It doesn't the these these reviews are just the best. They're the best content you can find on YouTube just bar none. In these in these reviews, the reviewer picks apart the movies and drives home this point that the Star Wars prequels like the previous, there there were three Star Wars movies somewhere in the 70s and 80s or something. And then there were three in the early 2000s. And the first three were really well received and were good movies. And uh, the second batch of three were basically just vehicles to sell toys. He drives home the point that in the those second batch of three movies, if you just stop and analyze minutia of, of the movie, in every single sequence in the movie, you can find things that just don't make sense. That could never work. And the same things, I, in my opinion, the same same kind of concept goes for Ex Machina, which 
is that if you just think about any part of the movie for the slightest amount of time. Yeah, but the thing with the movie is it, it it is not a consistent universe. This is why you don't want to have these moments, especially early in the movie, like the nerd words which take you out of the movie. Because once you're taken out of the movie, you yep. just see all of the terrible thing uh. <laughs> yes you start analyzing and that's that's why it was so hard for me to get back into the movie and then it did the robots killing everybody <laughs> and the on the nose stuff and it just it, it kind of teetered on the brink of acceptability for a long time until it became clear that the robots were going to kill mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. and it just lost every shred of respect for me i i can't even take it seriously as a feminist movie even if that was the idea of the movie which mm -hmm. i highly I doubt. was actually very proud of myself because it took me maybe like five minutes and i did get back into the movie and still all the time like with cutting out or like in various scenes i would think well that doesn't work but it didn't completely enrage me mm -hmm. so i i actually had a decent time with the movie I was not just like yelling at the screen the whole time or well oh, <laughs> I was I I have to say I'm I'm inventing now but it, it in my head it was even worse the fact that after two two weeks after I saw the movie I can still be disenraged what was HI's opinion of the movie they in my opinion they just made way too much I I don't exactly um remember what they said because <laughs> it was all kind of shit they sort of kind of said that they liked the themes and liked how it expanded on the view mm -hmm. of um, of AI and the threats of AI mm -hmm. and how these things are evaluated and how it relates to the human condition. But they, they put so much weight and meaning into this movie, which in my opinion is just a pile of garbage. So I, I didn't take them seriously. I guess that's also... If I would have taken them more seriously in what they said, I can see... The point also is that Brady Heron at some point says, this is just another mm -hmm. female AI movie like her. There, I have to say I agree with Grey in that, no, it's not. It's This is how <laughs> garbage her was good. Uh, I will say one thing closed, about the movie, which you can't say about most bad movies, is they did try. Um... You know, it was clear that effort was put in and that people thought about all these things. Oh, I have to mention one last thing, which, again, just I, I lose all respect for humanity. People were raving about the sound design. Did you notice no. what the sound design, what, what was interesting um, about the sound design? The only sound thing what, what can you that think I about? thought of, um, which I'm sure is not what you're talking about, is how... Intentionally, when they went up, when he went up to the door, they, the door talked to him, but they made it, made sure it was like robot voice so that they're like, oh, this is a robot. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, right. Yeah. You go up to the door. It says hi to you with a robot voice to say, hey, this is a robot. And now we're going to contrast that with our thing. I'm guessing that's not what you're talking about. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not what I meant, but no, but that is actually a good point. I, I didn't Ooh. notice that. No, the, the sound design, people people are raving about the fact that every time Linda moves, oh, it makes I kind of a robot that. sound of, mm. of little gears <sighs> turning. Like, that is, first of all, that is not exceptional sound design. That's not even special at all in Foley. Everybody knows that if something moves on screen, it has to have an associated sound to punch punch home that something's happening. That's how Foley works. That's why that's just prudent editing, mm -hmm. right? So, somebody paid attention. Yeah, they tried doing the Foley for the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's all. It's nothing exceptional, and also it's just part for the course. It happens with everything. Like when a car Scream. turns <laughs> in a movie, when somebody's they put in the tire squeals. Mm. Nobody ever has tire squeals in real life. That just doesn't happen. I've never heard it in real life. Uh, maybe I heard it once in real life. Just having having those ridiculous sounds, by the way, it, it's not, not how something like that would sound at all. 
uh, associated with the robot movements. It's just I think you I, care about accuracy not a lot more than I do. I am totally like if you, even if this movie want to slightly change like physics, I would be like sure. I don't mind. I don't mind these these small things. Sometimes, like in films and series that I really like, uh, they do these weird things that kind of take me out of it. And I think, well, there are redeeming factors here. The point is, there are no redeeming factors in Ex Machina. <laughs> it's a shit movie. And this just, people saying this is awesome just makes it worse. It just feeds mm. my anger. I just want to want to say to the entire internet that you're wrong. And I'm going to type vigorously on my keyboard, angry comments on Reddit. Have you talked to anyone else about your opinion on Ex Machina? Because I feel like anyone who... Nope. Basically knows what those words mean. Will get every single point. Um, okay, so mm. so I went on Reddit. I went on the CGP Grey subreddit. What? And guess what? Mm. Everybody liked the film. I think I'm the only uh, one who, who gets. Uh, no, no, some, no. Some I totally get what you mean. I have also this um, where there have been a few times where I had to stop listening to Hello Internet because I was just so frustrated with CGP Grey. I think. I think there is a good portion of people who listen to Hello Internet who really like and really find it super engaging, um, the AI stuff, because they talk mm -hmm. about it a lot. But for me, it's like sort of just on the edge, and sometimes it passes the edge, and I physically can't um, listen, it, yeah. listen to it anymore. So that's a, it's a little bit of a special I, uh, selection, the people on the gray Reddit. So the, the thing with the podcast, with, especially with Hello Internet... And, and Cortex kind of associated with it. I do listen to all of them, and I find them engaging, and I enjoy them, but I think that is mostly because it's a genre that just doesn't really exist very much. There are other tech podcasts. A lot of them are about news, <laughs> which I just don't care about. I don't care about the newest phone or a computer part or whatever. Or they are about very niche things like the pen addict about pens or 99 percent invisible about design which is kind of a <laughs> meh topic for me i i enjoy some aspects of it but not enough to listen to a podcast that's just about it and hello internet it just feeds into this general it, it's partly about youtube which i very much enjoy the workings behind youtube and it's partly about uh just the types of tech <laughs> that I like, I guess, and the type types of tech topics. So that's what makes it engaging to me. But I do, I do completely agree with you that the opinions of Mr. Mm -hmm. Gray are very polarizing. At points, he is obviously <laughs> not right, but he he also admits this. <laughs> I I don't want to defend him because he doesn't need any defending, but he does admit that uh, mm -hmm. he's an idiot sometimes. <laughs> and wrong, but he just says he's not wrong, or he he states his opinions very uh, confidently, yeah. which I think is a little bit of a, a. I have the same character trait, like I I do, <laughs> kind of reflect myself on him because I, with your sweeping generalizations. <laughs> yes, when I when I generalize things and say that a movie is shit, and instead of saying, well, I think the movie isn't very very good. That's something Rudy Heron would say, right? He would he would put it in flowery language and and kind of say uh, kind kind of put effort into saying that it's yeah, his opinion. Um, and it's uh, not to be taken as fact. I I think it's fine if people for people to say a movie is complete shit if that is their opinion because people should also know who they're listening to <laughs> and <laughs> difference between opinion and fact. Mm -hmm. Um, reason I like Hello Internet is mostly just for Gray and Brady. I think they're fun people, <laughs> always up to their sure. own shenanigans. Well, in the in the end, any entertainment is mostly yeah. character yeah. driven, right? It's if it's not exactly the character and the the personal traits, then it's the it's the the way they think or the way they they choose mm. their topics. Even I don't know. Should we go into any discussion about 
AI because I, lots and lots of people love talking about this. It's mostly eh, but there there are some interesting stuff there. I'd like um, to, you know what, you know what, I'm I'm leaving this in, in the podcast. We should talk about AI and the differences between mm. different types of AI. And uh, after that, I'd really like to talk about Isaac Arthur. As I still have not looked at this dude, but oh man, he has so much nerd You're cred. Out. <laughs> he is so awesome. So there might be some people listening to that. Uh, well, I guess to this, um, who aren't familiar with no. all these AI things. The thing that goes on with AI is people maybe within at least within the next 40 50 years that will be able to basically make computer programs who can on a general level operate with the same intelligence or really greater intelligence than human beings is just step uh, just to step back here what do you mean by intelligence how do you quantify this? <laughs> by intelligence we mean given certain problems basically can you solve them and really why we think, I mean, it, we don't have precise quantifications. Uh, well, there are some, but I won't go into those. On a very high level, pattern recognition. The reason why everybody thinks, and with good reason, that we can get to um, com uh, computer programs which can operate as intelligently and do sort of all the tasks that we humans can do on a computer is because... There are basically results on, we have a thing called machine learning where we can give a computer inputs and outputs and on its own, it will be able to accurately predict things. We have things basically like Google, which can know what you want to search. The idea is where does that have to stop? What's the limitation to that? And from what I've seen, I don't see any obvious limitations. I mean, everybody thinks like so. One one of the things that is usually one of the distinctions that is usually made is the difference between a narrow AI and a generalized AI. And narrow AIs are things that kind of already are here. So you have stuff like Cortana or Siri, or whatever the Google term is, Google Now, <laughs> I guess, where you can ask a question in sort of natural language and a computer figures out th this is not an exact question right it's you do not say uh, select data from data set where uh, you, you don't you don't ask an SQL mm -hmm. uh, string or something you ask natural language and natural language is fuzzy mm -hmm. by design and it kind of figures out what you mean, and then returns some kind of result. Or most of the time it says, I don't understand you. And uh, in this the same way, you have um, uh, something like Tesla Autopilot and other self-driving technologies, which can solve the problem of driving a car on the road. But if you ask any of these computers to do some other quote unquote human task, it will not be able to comply. It is narrowly focused on this one specific task, which can be multidisciplinary or at least multivariate um, and open-ended and fuzzy, but it is still very much a, a very narrow implementation of artificial intelligence or more correctly machine learning, I guess. So I'm going to ask a question. What is the difference between this and say just like generalized linear models or things like that where you just fit some regression? So there is theoretically given enough time, I guess most, well, the, the way most of these programs work, there's yeah. no difference, <laughs> right? It is, it is some kind of call, yeah, some kind of linearization or at least some kind of associative model or, or filtered model, something like that. There, there are these things that have already worked for a very long time, even evolutionary models. There are, there are things, input-output uh, systems that do like 50 evolutionary generations to figure out the answer. That kind of stuff already exists as just purpose-made programs by programmers. 
Arguably, the difference is that this is all done by machine learning, so you don't actually give it any boundary conditions. You just give it input and output, uh, input data and desired output, and then it figures out the associations itself. As you as you go on, and I think the most important distinction to make between a purpose-made program uh, and AI, quote unquote, would be that the complexity of an AI is simply unattainable by uh, mere mortal programming. Something something like a generalized AI, if it wants, if if we will have that in some time, even if everybody in the world would be a competent programmer and would be programming 24-7 on this program, we wouldn't be able to produce some kind of AI like that within the same time span as machine learning would. That's that's sort of the real rigorous distinction, which is <laughs> not actually that, that hard of a line, I would say. It's still a computer program. Yeah, if program. you take an AI course, it's like a, it's a statistics course. <laughs> Um, Essentially, yeah. And a lot of actual AI programmers say this, that there is there is an, a bit of an artificial line drawn somewhere, and this leads the general public, quote-unquote, like technically interested people in futurism, they think that there is some kind of magic line where something stops being a program and something starts being lifelike or the the connection with life and intelligence and evolution and that kind of stuff, which are in some areas Damn. of the world very charged terms. Are you asking what's the difference yes. between a person and a machine? Wow, that movie really got to you. <sighs> My blood's starting to boil again. I think I think you got more from Ex Machina than you thought. I think we all I will learned you. something today. <laughs> <laughs> I I follow uh, my university kind of closely and because I have been with the uh, electrical engineering department which is also the par- department which does uh, informatics and mm. computer science for a long time they've been thinking about starting a, a new chair for artificial intelligence mm. some of the professors kind of held off and said well why start another statistics <laughs> course essentially Statistical uh, computational statistics is all already a thing. It's been a thing for like twenty or thirty years. So why start another course on the exact same thing? Like it's not different. It sounds different. Yeah, that's why <laughs> it has different applications. But there are already applications. Like there are uh, student-run companies at uh, Yes Delft uh, from the Technical University Delft in the Netherlands. Uh, that already use AI, and those are people that study these these topics in not in an in a dedicated AI course. Yeah, they they have AI minors, but this is already a thing that you can do with normal mathematics, essentially. So there's no difference for all intents and purposes, or if I want to use an acorn for all intensive <laughs> purposes. Um, sorry, that was a, a topic on Reddit today. The difference between a human brain and a computer program is functionally uh, nothing, which is kind of interesting. Well, I think the idea is throughout, I guess, the vast majority of facets is people think there are things special about, well, themselves. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, this is why maybe we need some contrast or this could be a future uh, debate corner where we flip coin and one of us argues for the other side um i always found the idea of i don't know people being special or just fundamentally different from other things very egotistical but you know it's a real thing and so i'm gonna say this you can't I just <laughs> i just don't like using using a value judgment mm. at all there you it's just can't prove yet i guess um that there is no functional difference between a computer program and a human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a true statement. There's, I mean, the only thing we can do is falsify stuff anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, it's we can try to falsify these differences, but I don't I don't understand why there would even be a debate there. It's just 
I just do mathematics all the <laughs> time, so why why stop at some point if we get useful results? It's a it's a very weird debate to me because it it tries to make a new compartment for existing science and mathematics and computer science, which doesn't really exist. It's just an extension of what we're already doing. Yeah. Um, so so why stop somewhere? I d- I do understand these arguments, the the real existential arguments of like the. Um, and this is this is where Isaac Arthur comes in. I've been hinting at Isaac really? Arthur all the time. Hinting? He's just so awesome. Yeah, I, I just been hinting. I, I haven't been explicitly sure, saying sure. this. Uh, this is ex machina, by the way. He does videos about futurism, right? So uh, rigorously looking into these concepts of very far future technology. So looking at uh, Eucumenot places, which is like a city-sized planet and looking at asteroid mining, looking at uh, civilizations at the end of time, doing black hole farming. But he does this mm-hmm. in a realistic way, right? At the end of time? Yeah, so so in the... Uh, beyond the Stelliferous area. Uh, area? I'm, I'm an idiot today. The Stelliferous area. Uh, era so the after the time where stars still exist so if there are no stars where do you get your energy well black holes they rotate so you can do you can use frame dragging to uh, extract rotational energy from black holes or you can dump other matter in it and get an accretion disk and you can use the um the radiation from the accretion disk to power solar panels or do all kinds of stuff he has these these realistic, well, quote unquote, realistic. These these things that actually work, that are based on true science, and could theoretically work. He has some workings out of orders of magnitude, and it, it's just a very rigorous way of looking at things we will never see, hey, and that for yourself very likely won't ever happen. You'll you'll live forever. Maybe you're a computer. Maybe, maybe everybody's a robot. That's the um, simulation hypothesis, and he also has a video on that. Oh, uh, is this... Am I plugging him? <laughs> <laughs> is this a branded podcast? Sure. Am I getting paid by Isaac Arthur? Oh, by the way, he has he has the cutest uh, speech yes. impediment. Yeah, Gives awesome. him so much nerd cred right off the bat. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he has a pocket protector, I'm sure. <laughs> he is a protector for his pocket protector. Right. The simulation debate, is that the thing that Elon Musk was on about? Yeah. Any questions like that where you're like, you can't prove it wrong or you can't prove it right are just completely useless. You can imagine up any framework to encapsulate all of the universe. It Do you, do you know how this how this this is called? Hmm? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind. This is called Deus ex machina. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, You're such a big ex hey, you machina. Made, you made a stupid dad wow. joke as well. If you if you think about it for fifteen seconds, why would the AI not serve us in a in a very productive way? Like. The first thing that will happen before, even far before we have generalized AI, is people will start becoming cyborg-like, like implanting mm. uh, stuff into their bodies, like doing I, grinders. I think stuff. there like is, what is grinders right in, now. Oh, you're talking about. I think there is actually some interesting stuff there, which is, I guess, another proposition to the Fermi par- paradox why don't we see any Mm -hmm. other intelligent life out there is because say like everybody thinks oh something or a swarm or blah 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 but isaac arthur has a video (laughs) about it um but one possibility and you could sort of see this with things like grinder which for people who don't know that's like um gene editing um so it could make superhumans in that sort of way so there, well, there, uh, there are two types of grinders. There are like cyborg grinders, who 
who just implant LEDs and batteries into their body, mm -hmm. and it's it's gruesome yeah. and horrible. And then there is people who actually do the, mm -hmm. the gene editing and organ editing. I've seen somebody do do. Um, nah, you you don't want to look <laughs> at those. It's kind of horrible, uh, and it failed actually. Yeah, so. I'm not gonna. Look. Yeah, it's um, it's it's pretty with bad. With gene <laughs> editing, I think there actually is some philosophical debate to be had there because once you get to gene editing you have to decide what is human because the thing i only think about is you can look at <laughs> say in norway a beautiful mountain range with a valley and you will just you know you'll like it it there it's a natural thing for most human beings that you know we just like nature and green grass and these mountains and beautiful scenes mm -hmm. but the only thing i can think about with grinder is you could make people feel that way when they look at parking lots and sort of there are yeah. these little boundary elements where you're like if you make someone like that are they still a person well you would say obviously yes but when you can change how fundamentally people function and what those unenumerated human values are you know you could quickly get to a point where there are people so these these kinds of these kinds of debates i think it, we are far beyond that point where we can have a productive consequential debate about something like that because uh it's just gonna happen people are just gonna do it somebody somewhere maybe with a lot of money maybe not even with that much money because Stuff like CRISPR is, you can buy a CRISPR kit for mm. $10 now. Um, the People are just going to do it. Mm. It's At some point, somebody will be born who has been legally or illegally genetically altered to mm -hmm. become three meters tall. Mm -hmm. I don't know. To have some kind of what we would call non-human mm -hmm. uh, or superhuman or whatever you want to call it. Uh, change made to them and there will be a debate for some time but it's just gonna be normal at some no, I I don't see this this as something that can be stopped mm -hmm. well I think it's like sort of the things where people talk about psychopaths or people who don't feel things you could mm -hmm. have people basically feel reverse of things or when you think about it I I just feel like people would tend towards how much can we push this? Because the first thing with CRISPR is um, preventing genetic diseases, which is, you know, very hard to argue against. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you yeah. know where it's going to end up. And you sort of just <laughs> push this until you could get people who are perfectly happy literally just eating and, say, running or doing squats. Mm -hmm. And just like that's all they want to yeah. do. They don't. <laughs> um, or people who have no ability to really learn things. Just y You can go all Pokemon <laughs> on this, basically. Yeah. It's. I think there, there's some good debate to be made about what constitutes a human being. Because, you know, you could also make there, very there's dangerous. There's a debate people. to be had. <laughs> Sure, there's a debate to be had, and it's there's going to be good, there's going to be bad, but at this point, that that is something I would agree is a singularity mm -hmm. thing. It's something it is going to essentially we have the technology right now to do very extensive gene editing mm -hmm. on humans in vivo. Uh, there, there is nothing stopping somebody from CRISPRing their kids. If we only knew exactly what's uh, how gene expression would work, and even that the gene expression thing, we're very far along. Uh, we can like with uh, cross-reference databases of um, different gene studies, more and more of which are actually being published into the public domain because a big problem until now has mm. been people research what certain genes do, and then they don't actually publish their data they only publish mm. the paper and not the exact location of that gene mm. which makes it harder to to find out what is what but well that's been getting published open 
uh, in the public domain. CRISPR is here. Yeah. Uh, there is, we, we now have the technology which means that if history is anything to go by within 10 or 20 years, there are going to be very extensively modified, large, maybe even human-like organisms, maybe like farm animals or it's like Dolly 2.0, I, I guess. It's creepy, <laughs> in my opinion. And one thing, getting back to what I was going to say about the Fermi paradox is mm -hmm. here's just like another random theory, which doesn't have too much ground. Um Mm -hmm. But you could have with, say, things like CRISPR, people value intelligence a lot or like critical thought and they want the truth. Um, and so you could have a thing where, say, an entire society gets CRISPR'd up mm -hmm. and up um, to intelligence. <laughs> and then because intelligence is also, in a sense, the idea of it is subjective. And so I think it's a possibility that within the subjective range that they value sort of these uh, future people, philosophical things. And you get to a point in society where people just start thinking, well, there's no reason to reproduce or live and they just die off. Mm -hmm. And then just everything's gone um, because they're like, Oh, we could do this for vice or virtue or whatever. But that's, an another possibility. You know that what what we're doing here is basically just oh yeah, falling. of course. <laughs> a anything can happen. <laughs> what we have now is an idea of CRISPR as something that can make a human into literally anything, and then projecting our own ideas onto that. And I think, like anything, for instance, let's let's just go back fifty years, well, seventy five years, I guess. Nuclear power was just new, and we were going to have flying cars, nuclear-powered flying cars, nuclear-powered uh, uh, Hoover's nuclear-powered everything, hmm. right? And then we found out the limitations of nuclear power, of why why there are like severe technical limitations on what you can actually use it for, and it's used in almost nothing nowadays. There, there are good reasons not to use it. And I think CRISPR is this, this amazing new technology that just seems like we can create uh, Pokemon out of cats, <laughs> I guess. Well, my goal is, and is that for <laughs> two biologists um, who work on this stuff or, or just very knowledgeable uh, will both listen to our podcast and feel the exact same way mm -hmm. we do when listening to Hello Internet talking about AI. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Because there are going to be limitations. And there there is going to be some kind of limiting factor to what we can do here. I think there are, there are real um, reasons to believe that, for instance, senescence is something we can overcome so we can live longer. Mm maybe quote unquote forever or at least hundreds of years. Yeah. And that would severely upset everything we have in the world because the economy doesn't really work with people who become that old. Ah, well, it would change um, stuff. I don't know that'd be like devastating. Well, yeah, it's going to change v the stuff very much. <laughs> maybe over longer periods of time, I don't know. But there are going to be fundamental changes within society. Or maybe we don't do that. And there there are physical things like certain diseases are almost certainly never going to exist mm. anymore. Uh, but maybe they are. We're just we're being idiots right now. Just to, to make sure that I'm being <laughs> CGB gray here. Everybody <laughs> is a CGB gray for something. I, that's why I defend CGB Grey. Mm, okay. Whenever he says something stupid, I just say, well, he's allowed to be an idiot mm -hmm. as well sometimes. We're all stupid. Habitica. Habitica? <laughs> On the docket? We have to do follow-up. Follow you died. I died. You're gone. And, uh, Death to them. There's a, uh, there's a good reason for it. Yeah. 
because Habitica, I, I'm sorry to say, Habitica, if you're listening to this, which you certainly aren't. You never uh, know. <laughs> you, 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 your app just doesn't work well on my phone. I have a Moto G 2014. I, I agree, it's two years old. And in 2016, current year argument, you should have a phone from 2016. Sure. I should update to the newest phone. But still, I mean, <laughs> Photoshop still works on my seven-year-old computer. Habitica, which is like nothing, it's a couple of sprites. Mm. It shouldn't take literally 97 seconds, I timed it, <laughs> to start on my phone. That's just ridiculous. Um, I tried adding a couple more tasks, tried to do some more with it. And um, the real reason why it stopped functioning and I just stopped trying to use it is it has these alerts. And I use those to uh, especially do the alerts for brushing my teeth, which I always forget to do on time, and um, doing my workouts on time. And there was this week, uh, last week, in the Netherlands, which is called the uh, Fietstal Week, which, which is in English, uh, like the bicycle counting week, hmm. I guess, literally translated, transliterated, <laughs> I guess. The um, in that week, every movement of people who have that app uh, is uh, recorded, and if you're on a bike, it is recorded as a bicycle route. And they use all that data to optimize our bike paths and to, to see which are most used and least used and uh, which routes people actually take compared to uh, what city planners think they do. And that app constantly runs in the background. So on my phone, I have that app essentially constantly running, being, being some kind of like fitness tracker. Then I have my regular fitness tracker, and then I have just the, the regular Google apps uh, in the background, a couple of email boxes, a couple of other stuff. And uh, then the Habitica daemon <laughs> just takes up too much memory and uh, doesn't alert me. Hmm. And we're still, if I start it up and I take off my tasks, and uh, then a day later I log in, I see, oh, I have 4 HP less because apparently it didn't register my tasks yesterday, even though I ticked them off. Yeah. <sighs> It'll be okay. So. Because you've left it. <laughs> it won't be okay. So now you can't do anything? Because you no. can't check things off? How are you even doing this right now? Essentially. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, I'm essentially dying. Oh. Well, I, I've uploaded myself to. Oh. Computer, oh. So. It's okay. It's good. It's about yeah. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'll have a, like a week to live, and after that, mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear me as a computer. Oh, uh, it just reminds me of the thing in Ex Machina. <laughs> oh, I can't save the model. <laughs> we have to delete it. <gasps> Where shall I? Uh, uh, that was fun. Oh. Uh. <laughs> We need to open up a church on fish and both become official cod pastors. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>